once again, good morning and welcome to your most authoritative news analysis show, News File. And my guests are seated and I'm introducing them to you right away. I guess uh, Abdul Malik Kukubako, editor in chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. Asan Kuma is a lawyer. Isaac Adongo is MP Boga Central and member Finance Committee of Parliament. Alexander Kwabna Afenyo Marking, he is MP, a FUTU and member Public Accounts and Defence and Interior Committees of Parliament. Uh, Kwabina. Kwamina, did I say Kwamina? Mm. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Right, so, gentlemen, good morning and welcome to News Fire. Good morning. Great. So, this is how we start. We want to briefly um, look at uh, Major Mahama, Major um, Adam Mahama, who was murdered in such a way that got everybody angry even as uh, we have mourned him and continue to do. I want to briefly um, ask and answer the question whether or not his death marks the beginning of the end of Galamse and mob action in Ghana. And in addition to that, we will also ask questions about what the NDC was seeking when it persecuted the Chief Justice, now retired. Theodora Georgina Wood. Georgina Theodora Wood. Now, um, so first, let's start with um, Major Mahama. And let's take a, a look at uh, some of these images coming from um, the state burial that was uh, held for him yesterday. We have plans, my king. Many, many plans. But when I think about you, I only smile because you are more than a piece of flesh circulating on social media. You are full of life, energy, and vigor. So I choose to remember you in that sense. You are a great husband, a great father, a great friend, a great son to your parents. I am beginning to believe my prayers hindered you from going earlier. But this time, you just had to go. I stand here today with a heavy heart to pay tribute to my son, my brother, my friend. Because these are all what Major Maxwell Adam Mahama was to me. This relationship started right from his birth because, because, <laughs> This relationship started right from his bed because being our first child, myself and Veru, his mother, competed for his company. Unlike most children, Maxwell was not the type who has baby girl as sleepless night. He was such a reliable and trustworthy son. I will greatly miss. I am falling to pieces. Tell the killers, they have destroyed me. Tell them, he was a very special son, forever my boy, calling me, mommy, mommy, mommy. He could never string a sentence together without mommy in it. Tell them, they do not know this loving, very affectionate son of mine. They do not know about how he would walk in Lift me up, put me on a sofa, say, relax, mommy, massage my feet. He openly showed his affection for me without shame. He could not walk with me without his arm around my shoulders. Mommy could not save her son. Mommy was not there to comfort him or take away the pain. To Barbara, the daughter Adam gave me, my daughter, who would openly proclaim to the world how special her husband was, an amazing father he was, I say, this bond will from now be much stronger than it already is. I will be there for you. 
adulting father my son was. Barbara's sons, my grandsons, have been robbed of their love and joy. Whenever he hugged and kissed me in their presence, he would say, Jaden, Jerry, this is how you should treat your mummy. His dream was to make a family and make me comfortable. He had a good heart, was compassionate, loving, and affectionate. Above all, he loved his country and vowed to protect its citizens. Major Maxwell Adam Mahama, may it be known to you, even as you journey into the tent, that we, the government and people of Ghana, shall immortalize you. We shall celebrate you, we shall do right by your family. Let the angels sing to you that you left behind a nation in appreciation. There are names that are given to various categories of special soldiers, seals, rangers, commanders, and such other epithets as depict valor, honor, commitment, and bravery. If we were to convey all these titles to you, they would not be enough to describe that which you embody. Right, so we heard from Major Mohammed's dad, his uh, mom, the wife, and the wife, the dad uncle, because the dad couldn't finish, and the uncle had to take over and finish up for him with his tribute. Then we heard the wife, we heard the mom, and we heard the vice president, His Excellency, Dr. Alhaji Mahmoud Baumia. <laughs> right, so Dr. Baumia says that we will immortalize his memory. I start with you, uh, Mr. Markin. Mr. Markin, we will immortal, immortalize him, his memory. Already, we know that there's a trust fund that's been set up with a seed fund of um, five hundred thousand. Uh, the president himself has made a donation. He calls it a, a modest donation of fifty thousand, and we understand various other persons are putting in uh, stuff to assist. What would you say of the manner in which? Major Mahama has been seen off. Of course, pos posthumously, he received the promotion to Major. Well, um, first of all, I believe that as a people, we, we, we see his death as something that exposes what a negative side of the Ghanaian, mm. I'll put it. And the fact that our perception uh, about how things are done, to the extent that you could presume that somebody is, uh, is an armed robber for whatever reason, you kill him. And because it's been happening in the past and nobody talks about it, or we say that, oh, yes, the person is guilty simpliciter because we know the person to be an armed robber. Mm. It's become the practice. In a way, others also think that, oh, the, there is no confidence in the justice delivery system. So the best way to deal with these things is to ensure instant justice. He doesn't want so to hear that. So it is never, never right to do such a thing. But it has happened. As a nation, I think we need to learn something out of it. And the only thing we can do is to let people have confidence in our justice delivery system. That no matter what, let the rule of law work. That is it. It's, un it's unfortunate. A young soldier, very ambitious, he would go in line of duty and such a thing will happen to him. I mean, I, I, I have not been able to watch the video fully. I mean, I can't stand it. Mm. I mean, imagine if my wife I said, I'm going to Parliament, and all she hears is that something like that has happened to me. I'm going for a walk, and I've been ambushed somewhere, and say, it's this and that. How she would feel, how the family would receive such a thing. So it's a very painful thing. And the statement by government to immortalize uh, this hero, 
I think it's a step in the right direction. The form it takes, I'm sure, upon consulting the military high command, they would have an appropriate uh, uh, means of making sure that this young man symbolizes something of value for the future of this country. We cannot just let it pass as one of those things, or that we cannot say it and forget about it tomorrow. Certainly, his death, his painful departure must also serve as an end to mob justice or mob injustice or those mob attacks that we hear in this country. It is never right and it must not happen. I also would like to commend the military <coughs> for their rather uh, patience um, attitude and posture because uh, what happened to this young man and the feeling at the barracks if the, 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 the leadership or their, their big men had not restrained them, uh, I think something else would have happened. You're in a democracy, they had no option. Well, yes, you may say so. In accordance with law, they have no option. But we are in a democracy and some people took somebody's life. So I'm trying to say that let's commend them. Let's commend them for uh, behaving in a mature way and respecting our laws. Because even listening to very senior officers, uh, they responded to what happened to uh, Major Mahama with a lot of emotions. Look, you've taken somebody's life. Burning him. Uh, come on. Very emotional. So we have to commend them right. for exercising restraint and uh, respecting the law. We hope that it will continue. Now, on the issue of prosecution, you introduced the issue by saying he was murdered. I, I thought you were going to say he, had, he was killed. You know, now it's going to take a criminal That's right. uh, uh, a trial. There's going to be a trial. So I would also urge, you know, beyond the gallery talk is the law. And that is where the problem is. So the, those investigating must be looking out for the ingredients of the charges. They should take their time and look for it one after the other. They shouldn't be swayed by public opinion because I'm not going to quote uh, the Court of Appeal decision in the Tagore that determining somebody's guilt is not about the reaction of the public. It's not about what the person says. It's not about how the public feels. But it's about looking out for the specific ingredients to secure a conviction. To me, that should be the focus. We say we are a country of law, rule of law. So that should be the focus of our investigators. So that when it gets to the attorney general, the attorney general would not have a difficulty at all in prosecuting. Because if now the family will be monitoring, the family will be watching. If you go, you know, do a swoop, you arrest people, you don't do the proper investigation, you don't get all the links, and you take somebody to court. I'm afraid a judge will acquit. And then it will come up with another matter will come up. Oh, political. Oh, the government was not serious about it. Uh, you see? And then the family will start writing petition. So what happened? Who paid bribe? Or somebody is a big man's... Uh, Son and all other matters will come up and it will complicate the matter. Okay. So I will plead mm. as, as, <laughs> as a lawyer that our, those in charge of investigation must be extremely sensitive to the requirements of the law. They must be conscious because that has been the problem. Law, law, the law taking its course and people disagreeing and now saying that we don't believe in the law. Mm. So let them do the needful. I am sure that if they approach it with tact, professionalism, they will get somewhere. Okay. Um, now, you, you could say that almost everybody who matters in the country was there yesterday. Of course, the vice president was there and also um, there for the president as well. You had the former president. Former presidents were also there. Um, would you say that from the expressions that we had from most of them as they interacted with the media afterwards, 
that it's going to be a reality that his death will mark the end of impunity, galamse, mob action. Well, uh, thank you. Arthur. Good morning to my good colleague. And uh, I have an opportunity today to thank my lecturer in uh, company law at the uh, University of Ghana. I was at the School of Admin when he taught me company law. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> 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 and, uh, well, surprisingly, he stopped all three of us. Yeah. Here. He can't run away from yes, it. Yes, and yeah. uh, I uh, deny. What, what I learned from him has made me a lot better in understanding uh, some of the things that I do. So mm. it's an opportunity thank to thank you, him. And, uh, I appreciate it. Yes, and uh, to uh, say good morning to my constituents, uh, mm. the people about the Tanga Central constituency. I think. Uh, I really would have wished that, that that would be the turning point. But as a country, um, we have always been brought together when we face tragedies. But how we have proceeded from there uh, have always been a big challenge. Uh, we all remember the May 9 disaster, uh, what happened. The whole country rallied together. And in those difficult uh, situations, you don't see the political coloring of our country. You see all of us rally together and, uh, and sing from the same uh, page. Uh, we saw what happened <coughs> with uh, the June 3 disaster. The whole country was at grief. We all came together. We condemned it roundly. Uh, and we had this uh, a very rude awakening uh, of the death of uh, Major Maxwell Adam Mahama. Uh, the first time I came into contact with him, uh, unfortunately, was uh, when he assisted us to airlift the body of uh, late uh, Simon Abinia, uh, who once was an MP for Borga, and I mean Borga then, and uh, a former Deputy Minister of Mines and Energy uh, okay. at the time. And he 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 offered uh, prayers uh, before the helicopter could leave. And when we arrived, he offered prayers again. And uh, I'm not surprised at uh, the kind of uh, person that he lived in his house. Mm. Uh, we learned a lot of lessons uh, from his own understanding of how to keep a family together, uh, his own understanding of how to make a home. And for somebody as young as he is, that is very inspiring. But you also notice that he takes that attribute to his own uh, professional life. And it's probably the reason he rose uh, very fast. Uh, he was probably going to become a major uh, sooner than later after he'd written the exams, even though he's been posthumously awarded that, uh, that crown. But a major at uh, 32 in the, in the army, mm. uh, he would have gone very, very far. In fact, we're looking at one of the people that had the opportunity to read the pinnacle in, 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 in the military service. Uh, not many people at his age get to that level. And given the long service that you require in order to attain the, the heights in the military, you were looking at one of those few exceptions that uh, was going to go very far. And so we've lost uh, quite uh, a very strong uh, career person. I listened to some of the speeches and particularly I was touched by what uh, the vice president said. Mm. He said it is us, Ghanaians, who right. did that to him. Mm. And he spent the whole of his life as a military person risking to protect us and we did that to him. But also it tells you that there are some people amongst us who can be very wicked. Wicked to the extent that even when the person, very armed, was willing to say, I'm a military person, uh, you can take my gun. I mean, I'm, I'm not willing to use it. You still can't take that for uh, what it is. Then what are you expecting? And this was a sniper. Uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, no, somebody who could, have, who could have taken lives with him. But he chose to go the, the, the path of peace. 
and to be given an opportunity to be heard. I think that was what he wanted. He mm. wanted to say, okay, I'm a military person, take the gun, you can arrest me, and I'll be heard. And in the end, if I'm found guilty, that is what I deserve. If, he actually has to be taken to the police station, exactly. as we know. Mm. You know. So that should tell you that this is a law-abiding uh, citizen who um, I'm yet to see an armed robber with a gun who would not cock immediately if he, he feels the slightest threat uh, to his life. But this person didn't do that. And we still went ahead to treat him the way uh, he's done. I think that the best way to immortalize him would be as a country to see how this becomes a turning point. I think that would be a much more better uh, way of immortalizing him. But of course, right. like my good uh, friend said, the, there are other issues to do with uh, the upkeep of his family and, uh, and all of that. Okay. And that's what Thank we need you. to look at. Um, let me go to Kaku, and um, it's, it's a question that I think will have to pop up. You said last week that the police should not rule out any other thing of evidential value that comes up. They shouldn't close their eyes to anything. Now, in the tribute that the wife gave, she says something that, you know, pricks my my mind. She said that, um, okay, yo, what was for breakfast was the last message I sent you on Monday at 9, 12 a.m. After we spoke at 6 a.m. and you said you were going to have your bath. For the first time in my life, I experienced a raping Okay, so that's fine. But my interest is at 6 a.m., she spoke with him, and he said he was going to have his bath. Will it be a bit strange that he does take his bath, and then he goes on jogging? Well, 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 that's an interesting perspective to the matter. I really, it normally, ordinarily, I'm sure people would go to for jogging before they come and wash down. That that should be the ordinary way of doing things. So that's a bit of a surprise to me. But I'm unable to provide any straightforward answer to this. To so be honest, the police should you. pay attention to yes, things like uh, this, as you said last week. Yes, I wouldn't want to speculate unduly okay. on this matter. No, but you know. I think that we've done well as a people, as a nation, as a state. We've given him a befitting farewell. Uh, before yesterday's ceremony, we had announced that uh, there was this, you call it trust fund? Yes. You no, know, had been put in place, some seed money uh, released or pledged, you know. Uh, there's this talk of, about a monument for him, which I haven't seen much official indications on, but I think it's clearly in the pipeline. If you listen carefully to the vice president talking of immortalizing right. his memory, that could be one of the ingredients, you know. So, the family seeking to suggest where they would want to have such, you know, thing. Yes, the tema, they, the tema runabout? they are entitled to make suggestions. Yeah. I only find there are people who suggest that it should be at that. Uh, Adventure that was my f that's my view too, mm. but I was intrigued a little bit by the Tamar thing. Right. You know, I was intrigued. I have to be honest with you, but this is not the time to argue with the family. Okay, it, it, there could be an element of insensitivity or perceived insensitivity. I'm not prepared to be charged <laughs> with any such thing. <laughs> but let them talk. Let the family express their feelings and let the state listen to them, interrogate the issues, and judge what is the best thing to do. Bottom line, the state must cater for the family, particularly the wife and the children. To be honest with you, we don't have a, a choice. You know? I know others, people have raised some other issues about others who have been victims and things. Yes. I understand them, but I get worried when we are mixing it all together and pretending or creating the impression that there's discrimination. There's a way to articulate that thing. There's a way to find a way to bring that thing on board. But the way it's done somewhere, sometimes, uh, it, it puts me off, you know. Okay. So, but we've done what ought to be done. He's been buried. Now we must look at those who are alive and ensure that the pledges and commitments that the state has made would 
be will materialize. That that's for me where the focus is. Beyond that, uh, government must take another look. Last week I made a point here, but I realized I was grossly misrepresented. Yes, yes. On social <laughs> media that I said I had. Not social before. media. I think even on mainline even, media. Even on mainline media I'm that. Deliberate. Yeah, pathetic. You know, I love social media, but sometimes it really gets me. But you don't have a choice. We need right. to go along with it. So I think it's well now understood that I did not say I had specific information about party executives that had masterminded the killing. And so was calling for an inquiry into that. I didn't do that. Yes. yes. What I called for was an inquiry distinct from the criminal investigations that is ongoing. Okay that will look into the Galamse thing relative especially to that area. Mm. And I ask that the Minerals Commission, Forestry Commission, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, the Armed Forces, the Police, the BNI, the Ghana Immigration Services must all testify. I know why I'm saying what I'm saying. For all you know, what is happening in that area may be happening in other areas. Right in terms of how we give licenses, how licenses are implemented, and the kind of game going on. There's so much available now, some of which, have, and I want to repeat, are already known to the police, and some to the army. There's, there's, there's another revelation that's being made, um, I'm, I've not been able to verify yet, that there was actually a stop order to that particular entity, that uh, company where they were protecting. Yeah. And if they have stopped work, there the will company, not be the, the need. The company stopped work under that order, but the Kalamseers were there. Mm. The company went there August. These are the things I don't want to talk about because okay. it look as if you are uh, becoming a defense counsel for somebody. Okay. There's no need to do that. Mm. But otherwise, Kalamse had been going on for the last 20 years in that place. The company went to uh, got its license August 2016. Go and check the situation there. You will see that this is a place that has been galamsed for more than 20 years. These are not things to talk about now. I would want the government to have an established platform and get all the evidence because you will see why perhaps we got into this mess. Right. Okay? Which, Let uh, me give you a hint. Which, Look. which the prosecution will not provide. Yes, there's, there's a big fish and this is just to drop something, at the Forestry Commission, who was making all sorts of noise and calling the army, calling the police, doing this, doing that. That gentleman is caught on tape selling forest reserves and concessions to Chinese and other Ghanaians and collecting money. Feedy, feedy. He's there. He's at the Forestry Commission. He's a big man. Okay. And so if there's such a platform, obviously the the... The DC who, was, who has also been suspended will be given an opportunity to be heard. I because, mentioned him. Yeah, if you remember, the community like, leaders. Like we said last week, yeah. you may need to listen to that DC a lot more closely. The only problem is the DC. He may have spoken at the wrong time and, and said that. With no, no reference to his jurisdiction. Okay. He had no business okay. talking about that. The, the, the soldiers are based elsewhere. Mm. The BNI reports and things relative to what that place, he had no brief on it. Okay. All right. But that's things we should wait for the committee right. to deal with. Now, now, now it's, um, sorry to, to take you deep into the, the critical issues on this, but, you know, Mr. Markin was talking about the Attorney General's Department or the prosecution and what they ought to do, keep their eyes on the ball and do a good job. Egbert Fable has raised some concern. He says, for example, that the accused persons are transported together in one van. And that is such a perfect opportunity for them to, you know, interact and plan how to escape <laughs> this uh, process. Um, yes. Uh, but I believe that before they are put in the van and taken to court, they would have been charged. They would have issued maybe caution statements, etc., etc., right. which would be on record. So if the stories now begin to sink and get out of sync with what they've written, it might lead them into even deeper waters. Mm -hmm. And so I, th I think that, that that can be handled because by now almost all of them would have given statements. 
and then if so if they then get together and change their story it it it, it, it sinks them to a deeper hole look i think that our greatest tribute immortalizing of the major would be that this is the last time we tolerate lynching um sorry i'm i the the thing still hits me in a very deep way as a people we have been doing this we, we suddenly have become such um anti-lynch people and and we are fighting with reverend otago for suggesting that it could be part of our culture mm. we've been doing this over and over again all you need to get somebody lynched is to shout julo eri kronfo then people they haven't stolen from will appear and begin to deliver slaps <laughs> At some point in time, we, we intro, look, if you have an accident and you are not careful and you are the driver, you yeah. are going to get lynched. Yeah. The, there's a law report about some, uh, the, you know, you, you must remember the gentleman who, had, who, who knocked down and killed some students. You know, he was afraid for his life because it is part of our system, the quiet subtext that if you, if you are involved in an accident, you could get lynched. We remember this issue of the vanishing penises and breasts. <laughs> Well over a dozen Ghanaians were killed in this country on rumor. One was a student at the University of Science and Technology. One had just completed advancement. We killed them. We introduced the necklace where we put a tie around your neck and light it and burn people alive. So let's stop being, you know, these, suddenly these sanctimonious people who, who know, know, know that this is wrong. Look. The visiting of violence on people suspected of, of, of crimes is, it has, has been part of us. Every, not even crimes. Suspected of witchcraft. Do, have we all forgotten Kung Fu Nyamiche? Who used to allegedly arrest witches and subject them to all kinds of indignities to press coverage? But finally she ran and <laughs> something happened. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an unfortunate parallel. She said on, on radio that she made a mistake. She arrested a rich witch. And that if you are going to arrest witches, arrest the poor ones. But she arrested a rich person who got her arrested. And when she got into trouble, she abandoned the witchcraft hunt that she was engaged in. This has been going on. There's the, people seem to have forgotten. The hospital administrator at Gorso, right. who was also the presiding member of the district assembly, right. he was lynched. The, atro, the, the what, what, what are now calling the Atronie murder trials. Mm. Ten people were convicted of murder. In fact, they recently lost their appeal in the, at, the, at the Court of Appeal in Kumasi. Our biggest tribute to the major is to make sure this is the last time this thing happens. And, we, and if indeed there's evidence against the 40 or so people who have been arrested, careful, disinterested prosecution of the various possible offenses, murder, abetment, conspiracy, attempted... Well, well I'm, my point is that causing harm well by this and they went beyond harm they, they killed him mm. and murder is causing the death of another person through unlawful harm so if that can be proved and there are all these people and they, they can show that these people took a part in it and those who assisted or aided are also charged with the proper offenses and they go through a proper trial and i'm saying not an emotional trial and alex thanks for telling us that a careful black and white brutally efficient trial, the type that um, the late uh, 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 Sam, uh, Justice Sambadu would have done. Right. He, that, that, you know, that, that, that kind of, the kind of prosecution mm -hmm. that uh, Justice Sambadu was, was, was famed for. Mm -hmm. That is what we need. And these, if they indeed committed these offenses, they are convicted, tried, convicted, and sentenced. That will be the greatest tribute to this major. And I think that that ought to happen. Some say to ensure effective deterrence, if it does happen that some are, co are, are found guilty of murder, the death sentence, the warrant should be executed. I believe that since, I believe from 19, since about 1990, we have not carried out any death. 93. 93. We mm -hmm. haven't carried out. Yes. Um, the last uh, one was that, the, the Kolebu uh, murder. Yes. The, the medical student who was killed. Right. The, you know, we said this in school, uh, where, he, where he said Mekumagi. Mm -hmm. We used to call it the Mekumagi case. I think, and it was Justin somebody who prosecuted right. that, that, that matter. Mm -hmm. I think that was the last person to be shot. So from about 1990s, we sentenced them to death, keep them on death row forever. Sometimes they get a reprieve. It is, you know, reduced to um, life imprisonment, 15 years, some get out. Right. Um, 
I am essentially an anti-death penalty advocate. But I am also sensitive to the fact that there could be some egregious circumstances where the warrant ought to be signed. That warrant and that, that box stops on the desk of the president. That's right. Now, what, and I think that uh, the, you know, the president himself is quite an anti-death penalty person. And so it will present a very interesting dilemma. But you know, for me, it is the process. Let's go through the process. Let's cross that bridge if we get there. But watching this process very well, thankfully, and this is an unfortunate word, thankfully there's video coverage. Right. And is this is the thing about development, that social media and uh, you know, smartphones. There was a time when you wouldn't have had anything. You, you can identify faces through simple technology. You can get frozen shots of people and see exactly what they did. So there's already, in my view, almost near incontrovertible evidence. People are saying, is video ed evidence admitted? Hello, uh, relevant evidence is admissible evidence, right. period. Unless you can exclude it on some other ground, relevant evidence is admissible evidence. And, and I, I, I do, I, you know, we, we, we sometimes argue as if we are still in the dark ages. Technology has moved ahead of us. And so if they can catch these people in the still frames inflicting harm, then it doesn't matter whether you threw a pebble or a block. You will be convicted. And so to me, this is the biggest tribute to him. And I, I, I also agree with the fact that, yes, we need to have the, the, the you know, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the young man yeah. build what we have to build. Although I will say that let's push it to where the incident happened. Let's immortalize it. Let's Ghanaians see this and regret it the day that we, and it's not, let's stop demonizing just those people. <laughs> this has been going on in Ghana for years. That this was our day of shame. That we could not protect him. And we will make sure that this never happens. And in the extremely unlikely event that it happens again, we will take the people through the rigors of the law and give them the punishment that the law requires or to be given to them. To me, the process is very important. Now, finally, what do you say about those who are advocating what you may they, they, they suggest you to be the Mahama Duty to Rescue Act. There should be a law that, and I've heard uh, Dr. Mani Buama and others support it, that there should be a law on the back of this against mob action, that we need a specific law. Um, we could do it for optics, for visuals. I think the law, that the law exists. <clears throat> the part of it which suggests that there should be a duty on people standing by to interfere in the action or be charged for crimes is extremely debatable, right? Because I see a mob acting and I go in there and intervene at the risk of my life. In this, essentially, if I don't risk my life, I will go to jail for not risking my life. Mm. That is debate. We need to look at it very carefully. Um, and like I said, we need dis disinterested, cold look at these things. No, not not at a time like this when people like, like me, I'm extremely emotional about this matter. Mm. I, I, don't, I don't think I will make sense you know, dealing with it. But there's sufficient law. If you create it, you're just going to create parallel law. The laws on abetment take care of this. The laws on murder take care of this. I don't know whether we want to hide that out of the law and create a special law for that purposes. It, it, to me, it's debatable. But let's see how this trial goes. Okay. Right. So um, those, of, uh, those who are campaigning for that, particularly one of the lead crusaders, um, Kweku Enchi Boesiakon, I'm sure that you are taking notes from this. They want specific law to deal with some of these matters. That's if you want to say want something to about it, let's do it in one minute yes, so that we can move on. Uh, beyond all these, I would also want to urge the judiciary to intensify engagement with the public regarding how our laws work. Ghana Abba Association also has a duty. Because you see, all these things are driven by perception that I won't get justice or it will not be done and all that. Again, also, and I know you know about this, our police officers, those who investigate, you know that generally they don't really take serious interest in investigation. It's all about, oh, he said he was guilty, he confessed of the crime, then papa. Or that we couldn't get evidence. Today, if somebody assaults you, you, the victim, would have to get money to pay for the medical uh, report that would have to be signed, that medical form that is given you at the police station. So if you don't have money, that...
critical evidence cannot be procured. You know about that? Right. Yes. So okay. we, we, if we are looking at mm. this, let's look at it holistically. Right. So that uh, <laughs> we don't come back tomorrow. Mm. Okay. And the country is producing a lot more lawyers. We have expanded the law, mm -hmm. uh, the law school. So when the, the rule says that the lawyers have a fourfold duty, which includes duty to the public, I think that is where all of us must come in and seek to educate the lawyer, public. If you are pursuing, um, pursuing a criminal matter, hey, in this matter, but, but you know that it matters like this. Even if all of us lawyers refuse to represent them, the court can appoint you yes. to represent them on the pain of contempt. That's so, true. So if you, if you are, if you are wearing that, but you, you know, you know, you know, you know the reality. Mm. If you, no, no, but what, that what criminal happens, man, some yes, people, okay, yeah, don't get it. But you'll be forced to do it. Mm. So the court will force us. And I think that when if it gets there, the, the, look, it's about the sanctity of the process, mm. and let's make sure that it is protected. And if they are guilty, they go to jail. And, and right. so that we can be forced. So, you, so, you, so you briefly, <laughs> briefly, let's also finish up on this one. And I just want to read, begin that with this quote. And it is this. Can you imagine a full vessel, an array of the men and women who matter at the time, with the press in full array asking you to resign? Let's listen to this or watch this clip quickly and return to this quotation from the retired Chief Justice. us that when they talk about leadership, we're talking about servanthood. Yeah. Leadership is not about I should grab, I should get, I should everybody else, you know. When the leader is satisfied before you come in. And he taught me this simple and I grasped it. Amen. That ah, so if you're a leader, this is what it's not a time for, it is a time for saving servanthood. And as you are aware, Chief Justice Georgina Wood has hinted that she nearly resigned her job. Not because she wanted to, but because she was brought, there was such pressure mounted on her to resign simply because she had been appointed by the Kofo administration. And this is the pressure the NDC brought to bear on her. It took a prophecy in church to get her to decide that she will soldier on regardless of the pressures. Now, I start on that note, I start with Ace. What would you say has been the legacy of this Chief Justice and um, why would she want to disclose such sensitive, you know, information at this time? Well, let's start with the, with the legacy. There's the obvious that she's the first female to have risen to that position. Not on account of um, patronage, but she had earned her stripes, started from the circuit court, and worked her way all the way to the Supreme Court. Before then was police officer. Yes. Now, I, I, I think there are subtexts to this that people probably do not know. Do you know that she turned down the first offer to go to the Supreme Court? People do not know this. I see. But in the, yes, I mean, we must, we must give Anna to whom Anna is due. In that crisis situation where we did not have a panel to do the review of the Chikata trial, two judges were tapped from the Court of Appeal to go to the Supreme Court. One was just, uh, Justice Wood and one was Justice Afre. Justice Wood turned it down. She went to the Supreme Court later and then became Supreme Court uh, Chief Justice under the same government that she had turned down originally. So when she's criticized, I think some of the criticism is based on arrogant ignorance as to who she is and her standing. Yes, a lot of pressure was, was brought to bear on her. I'll also reveal another thing because we are giving Anna to whom Anna is due. The attacks on her went international. Some article clearly written in Ghana was planted in a newspaper in Kenya at the time when she was helping the Kenyans establish their Supreme Court. It was a nasty article, obviously written from here. 
the bar association in Ghana had to respond. I had the, the, the duty of being the one to drop the statement from, from the bar, responding, you know, the, the president at the time called me, Mr. Beecham, and we responded to that. So she wasn't just attacked here, she was attacked internationally. Um, but we can speak about the stability that we've had in the judiciary. We can speak about the physical developments, the court buildings. She didn't start all of them, but she didn't come and abandon projects that had been started. In fact, a lot of the time, it took her personal drive, her relationship with, the, with, 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 with President Mills. You know, she exploited it to make sure that the judiciary, at least in terms of its infrastructure, something began. And with change of governments, she remained firm. Yes, she's criticized for not sitting on the presidential um, uh, petition. And well, life is a mix. Uh, she, she believes a lot in the Bible. She said all things were together for the good of the So all things, everything that would be considered good. But on that, there's another thing people uh, miss. She might not have sat on the petition. But let's all do Monday morning quarterbacking. The petition was not the only case going on at the time. How come the Supreme Court system didn't collapse? Because the majority of the judges were sitting on this and were sitting literally nine to five. Right. <coughs> what people do not realize that other cases were going on. So she might not have sat on that matter, but she made sure the court was running. She sat herself. I appeared before her at least twice or three times while the presidential petition was going on to make sure that other, it didn't become a bottleneck, a clog, a choke to other cases going on. So we might, yes, we might differ on some of these things. But I think that when we read her, her we look at her, her complete service on the, on the bench, you know, against the vitriolic attacks, she survived them. She, I, I uh, you know, the, 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 I think there must be something in her makeup, mm. some attributed to her going to Wesley Girls, but it must, there must be something in her makeup that made her withstand it and serve her term. I think that it's also a tribute to her that when she retires, the next person after her is another lady who has also earned her stripes. For all of us with sisters, daughters, mothers, it is a sign that if you work hard, you can, you, you can go to the very top of your profession without being, uh, you know, that, so that perceptions of discrimination against women can be fought from bottom up and also from the top. Okay. And so I think that she leaves a very good mm -hmm. legacy. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that her successor will build on it and the successor to the successor will build on it. And gradually we, 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 you know, we will deal with a judiciary system that is strong. Look, the Anas exposés could have broken the back of many. The, there's a reference uh, she makes to that period also, you know, where she had to go through a lot of, of difficulties. Course. And what could that difficulty be? Because she's had to empanel, you know, panels to sit on those cases and get those judges she, out. She, she's still in court on those matters. She's, okay, been, she's sued been sued se yeah. severally mm. by, 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 by some of the people who were affected, right? She's been challenged. In fact, uh, if you look at it, at some point, even the same Supreme Court had a slight slap on her wrist on the issue of disclosing the contents of the right. of the petition that's a slight slap on her wrist mm. by her own supreme court right and so when you look at it there's there's the she, she's been through it all the highs and the lows but, but my, my point is that the sum total of it is that this has been a significant period in our history she has she has she has piloted the ship very well right. and the dealing with the anas expose no judge, uh, except those that, that, that for uh, respect of whom there, there was not there was insufficient evidence, nobody slipped out of the, of the net. She made sure the committee sat, and the committees were sitting nine to five mm. every day. They were given a hearing, and ultimately um, punishments were, 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 were meted out. But the fact that she got sued in the process should be normal. That shouldn't be a problem. Of course, because they're not being sued. <laughs> you all well know it's like, it's, it's like breathing oxygen. I mean, really, it is, it is part of the system. You expect that people who have been accused of such things would fight back. Right. I, I always say it's for the it's for sanitizing the process, for the sanctity of the process. The people should, just shouldn't be, you know, shut up and literally led to the slaughter. They should be allowed to test the system. If they win, they win. If they lose, they lose. But this process is what's important. And I think that she comes out smelling like roses in a very difficult time. And I will not only give her credit for on, on that Anas thing. I would also give a lot of credit to President Mahama, mm. who also made sure that he 
took his hands off it and allowed the system to work. The two of them, because one dealt with the lower judge, one dealt with the higher court judges, they could have, could have said, hmm, this judge is my friend. This judge, I, I brought him or her into the bench. What can I do to protect him or her? Okay. But they let the system roll right. and, and justice was served. I think that she has served her time. She has earned her strike. <laughs> she, her name ought to be written in gold. Right. Because a member of the NDC legal team, Chris Akume, says that she's wrong to suggest that it's NDC that was after her because he points to a community that also had problems with her and, you know, demonstrated or petitioned the president, so to speak. So it's wrong to suggest that it was just NDC that had problems with her. Oh, so NDC and others had problems with her. That's the suggestion he gives. He yeah. makes. Does it change anything? It doesn't change anything. Look, indeed the NDC had two press conferences where they took her on direct. If you recall, in the wake of the many ways to kill a cat mm -hmm. incident, mm -hmm. yeah, they did. I think there was a specific reference to that particular uh, <laughs> expression. Okay. Uh, yeah, they did. And they pointed to certain things. You see, if you recall, before election 2008, there was this road traffic amendment that was done to the road tra traffic uh, law. Right. But apparently, the police and the courts were using them repealed legislation yes. which led to some taxi drivers and others being jailed convicted and sentenced by the courts and it became an issue and it, they realized the judiciary realized that look we're using a repealed legislation so she set up a committee made up with a certain judge in charge we've discussed that matter here before to cure the mischief and then dc protested then that because, you see, that become a campaign issue, the jailing of the yeah, drivers. Because the timing was, you Yes. Know. So the NDC read politics into the judicial and administrative action that she took and took her on. And on that basis, we're asking for her resignation, even before the elections uh, took place. This is do well documented. Then, too, the NDC and its allies, including those social groups you are talking about, also read politics into her appointment as the chief justice because of her chairmanship, uh, chairmanship of the MV Benjamin uh, Committee of Enquiry and said it was like a reward. They said so publicly. It's documented. Meanwhile, if you go to the vetting, her vetting, you realize that it was the chief justice then that asked her to do that job as a public service. It's in a vetting. So there were people in the NDC who knew the answer because it was captured in Hansard. They took part in a vetting. But they ignored that significant record and continued to say that, look, this lady had been appointed to, head, to become chief justice because she did some favor relative to the work she did with MV Benjamin, which was completely unfair. Then after the elections, when Professor Mills took over, a lot of agitations took place that resigned. Yes, petitions, left, right, center. What's all harassment? Without any basis. So I'm happy she's released that thing out of her. It's therapeutic, you know, it, it, it heals. And that's what she did. Okay. Going to the Council of State so that she can have the peace of mind and settle down and do further contributions to the state. What, 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 do, you, what do you think would be the motivation of a political party or government wanting to be the one to appoint a chief justice? Because is there a correlation between the appointment and any favors from the court? Well, history does not vindicate that. We have records of governments having sacked chief justice. I mean, Kwame Nkrumah or Sajifu himself, Akokosa was dismissed. And then you have military regimes that when they came, they removed the chief justices and brought in their own. But consistently under this Fourth Republic, even before the Fourth Republic, Justice Apalu was chief justice for a long time and retired voluntarily. Justice Acha retired. Though he had retired and was brought back to be CJ, he retired. Uh, Aban, I think, died in office. Redu retired on medical grounds. And Aqua came in. Aqua died in office. So really, but check the Supreme Court judges and justices and things. Look, Justice Akins is a classic example. 
He was PNDC Secretary for Justice and Attorney General. Have you checked how he ruled on the 31st December movement, uh, like my public holiday? So you see, they have security of tenure. They also look at law in a large measure. So forget about the political associations. Some did have political associations. There are some judges who were commissioner. Look, uh, Mr. The Justice, uh, oh, the ju judgment that commissioner, my own friend. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, they have political connections. You are aware? Yeah, yeah. He was yes. a deputy secretary and, yes. and the PNDC. And not only him, yes. there are many others. Yes. But, but look at him today. Yes, they stick to the law. Yes. So for me, that to a large extent, mm -hmm. that thing is really an unfunded percep uh, perception that is too overrated. <laughs> okay. That's my view. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, what do you say <clears throat> that what she reveals gives people you know, confirms to people that the NDC in many ways has been anti, you know, judiciary or so to speak? Well, I think you can just uh, use one example and say in many ways it's anti-judiciary. I mean, that will not be fair. I mean, uh, we all do know that there are very senior people that are appointed into constitutional bodies mm. with secured mandates. And they've come under pressure from different political parties uh, many times. But it doesn't mean that that political party is anti that institution. And so it would be far-fetched to, to, to make that analogy. We do know how um, the, the EC chairperson was fiercely resisted. That's right. But it doesn't mean that MPP is anti-EC. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to uh, put that uh, in, in perspective. I think that, yes, uh, she's a state person. She's done quite a lot of work. Uh, she's one of those people that is leaving office at a time that even those who doubted her uh, have come around to accept that she's a woman of integrity. And I think that we should be remembering her more for that. Uh, over the course of the tenure of any difficult office, such as that of the judiciary, you would find instances where people would disagree with you on, 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 on other issues. And when people disagree with you, they may adopt strategies that they feel will serve their interests. But over a period of time, they would come to accept who you really are. And so in my view, uh, it doesn't mean that once she had a challenge at some point with uh, elements of the party, it means that NDC is anti-judiciary. I don't think that is a, that would be a fair assessment. But she, we all agree, if you listen to the, uh, some of the, the, the comments that came out of leadership in parliament, particularly uh, Honorable Oseche Mensabonsu and that of Honorable Aruna Idrisu, it was quite clear that she's one of a few that deserve a lot of praise. She's turned around the judiciary quite significantly. Um, we are aware that any time there have been a challenge to do with the justice delivery system, and it's come to her notice, she's made a conscious effort to see how that can be improved. Mm. Uh, only yesterday, I heard a report uh, on one of the stations that today you have uh, the judiciary basically moved to the to the prisons. Right. You There's know, a court at uh, Sawa. You know, and 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 it's, it's it's part of the reforms that you know, yeah, to try and ensure that people are just not locked up and forgotten about. And so, those are a lot of uh, uh, some of the the pluses that uh, any person taking over, if for nothing at all. Anytime there was a special situation like the Galamsey fight, like the, exactly. she she'll, sets up specialized yeah, she'll courts. Make, she'll make a special effort. Mm. And once it comes to her notice, she when makes a special effort. When the ECC timetable was getting out of control, exactly. <laughs> she set up she, exactly. uh, how so many, 14 or 12 that, of them. That, mm. that, that uh, foresight and that ability to engage constructively and to be forward looking, you know, you, she doesn't wait till the thing becomes a problem. But she would, once she understands the implications of what you are saying, she will work with her team to see how uh, that can be improved. And 
she's living a much more stronger judiciary. Like we all agree, the announced expose nearly, nearly mad. And if we had lost the judiciary, I'm right. sure we would have lost the whole country right. because uh, when you and I have a challenge, that is where we run to for, for mm -hmm. refuge. And if we don't have that, then that, and to have managed that turbulent period so well, uh, and to give the judiciary the kind of uh, image that they are still enjoying, even though a lot still can be done. Right. We expect the next CJ to uh, continue the improvement in right. order that we can have a better system. As a, as a practitioner of the courts, uh, use of the courts, what do you have to say? Well, something. Um, as a young practitioner, my first time at the Supreme Court, she presided. And I had been sent there by my senior. Um, Tadio Sori was on the other side. And uh, I couldn't speak, I couldn't say anything. <laughs> and <laughs> Teddy, <laughs> oh, as usual, <laughs> <laughs> he just intimidated me. Teddy, uh, sorry, is listening. Even before, even before the case was called, mm. uh, Afenyo, are you the one? Eh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so after that, I was going, and I'm sure I wanted to take a date. He said, No, here we don't take dates. So, what are the issues? In fact, there were some senior lawyers. Can you help him? Can you assist him? I felt so dejected. So after the case, I was going. Young man, then he called back. A very calm voice. He said, no, I want to be seeing you here. So. You mean this, the chief justice? Yes. Okay. I want to be seeing you here. So that was a turning point, an, an immediate inspiration. That any time a regular practitioner of the any time yes any time and naughty one <laughs> yes. and any time I would I get the opportunity I'll come back mm. next time I had the opportunity I was losing cases here and there and you know I didn't give up each time she will find a way of educating you telling you you know lawyers we like to talk plenty say so what are the issues I'm taking you down what are the issues. You have no choice to address her on the issues. So, to some of us, she's made us better in our practice. Not only her, other members of the Supreme Court. Justice Doche, Justice Atuguba once met me and said, Are you a fenior market? You are doing well. Keep, it, keep the good work. I said, ah, But this man will be reprimanding you. You think that he doesn't even like you. And now, apparently, he knows you. So we've learned a lot, and I'm sure many other lawyers have learned a lot from her approach and all that. I'm compelled to add on to what uh, my other colleagues have said here. And this is a quote from a, a Masonic uh, book, that when you rise to eminence by merit, you live respected and die regretted. There's no doubt that... She rose to eminence by merit. There's no doubt, again, that we regret her not being in the, in the, in the, in the seat. Of course, when you take up the mantle of leadership at such a level, you don't expect everybody to like you. I know that some uh, 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 male judges or some judges uh, felt strongly that she... she give undue advantage to women, <laughs> judges, and all that. I mean, it, those are part of it. Mm. But we also know that there was that deficit. So we needed to also balance off and all that. There are some judges who hold the view that the things many we more... The say publicly, you are talking about... Oh, but we're discussing... <laughs> oh, senior, are we not supposed to discuss? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she herself has talked about how she was harassed. Right. Or hasn't she said that? Right. So, okay. yeah, so it's also important oh, for her yeah. to know okay. some of the perception the men have about her. Aha, uh -huh. that's when they, they stand on equal chance, uh, they should, the women will get the advantage. I mean, it's an open still, The women numbers in the, in the system is not more than oh, the men. Of course, I right. agree. Mm. Yes, yeah. yes, of course. So I think she is also an inspiration to women. Mm. And to rise to that level, any, any, any serious minded woman would also want to work hard uh, and enjoy being called a judge. Right. So. Uh, all in all, she's done a commendable work, and I think Ghana is grateful for her efforts in reforming our judiciary. Today, you can get your uh, 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 a case 
you have uh, our course list is on the internet, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You can have it. All these reforms uh, didn't take a day. It's right. been collective. The bar okay. supported, and we are where we are. Okay. We hope for a better, a better tomorrow. Right. And uh, also, she, she happens to be the first time that we are having a, a retired chief justice on the Council of State. Is that the case? The, the many, uh, I, no, the constitution. Yeah, yeah so those those there, but I think that factually, they 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 died almost immediately. Okay, they left yes. office. Right. So she's yes. been appointed to take care of place. Office. So because um, we had we had we had this, a vacuum mm. yeah, right. because we didn't have any retired just, just, yes, okay. surviving retired. All right. So let's hope that this uh, council of state will be better than what we have had previously. We'll take a break here, and when we return, we'll deal with the matters arising as far as the. A controversial bond issue is concerned. There are matters of uh, detected fraud. 50 million CDs at the NY, at the YEA, it used to be NYEP, and then moved to JIDA, and now it is YEA. And also, we will talk about the Chinese who are being prosecuted and who now, quote unquote, are presenting the prosecutor with uh, money and uh, IT equipment. We'll also ask why a lawyer's ban, three years, is big news in Ghana. We'll be right back. <laughs>